What should a phlebotomist do if they see a hematoma forming during blood collection? A. Push the needle deeper. B. Remove the needle immediately. C. Finish collecting the sample. D. Tighten the tourniquet. Answer, B. The needle should be removed immediately and pressure applied to prevent further blood leakage and swelling. In a capillary collection, which sample is collected first? A. Hematology tests. B. Blood gases. C. Chemistry tests. D. Coagulation tests. Answer, B. Blood gases are collected first during capillary puncture to prevent air exposure from altering results. What color tube is used for a potassium test? A. Red. B. Green. C. Lavender. D. Yellow. Answer, B. Potassium levels are typically measured using a green top tube containing heparin. Which antiseptic is most commonly used for routine blood draws? A. Hydrogen peroxide. B. Iodine. C. Chlorhexidine. D. 70% isopropyl alcohol. Answer, D. 70% isopropyl alcohol is standard for cleansing the site before routine venipuncture. When should blood cultures be drawn in relation to fever spikes? A. During the fever spike. B. After the fever spike. C. Before the fever spike. D. Irrelevant to fever timing. Answer, A. Blood cultures should be drawn during a fever spike when bacteria levels in the blood are highest. What is the recommended needle gauge for standard adult venipuncture? A. 18 gauge. B. 21 gauge. C. 25 gauge. D. 30 gauge. Answer, B. A 21-gauge needle is most commonly used for standard adult venipuncture, balancing flow rate and minimal trauma. Which test is most affected by hemolysis? A. Blood culture. B. CBC. C. Potassium. D. Cholesterol. Answer. C. Potassium levels can be falsely elevated by hemolysis due to the release of intracellular potassium. A blood smear for a differential should be made from which tube? A. Red top tube. B. Light blue top tube. C. Lavender top tube. D. Gray top tube. Answer. C. Blood smears are prepared from lavender top tubes containing EDTA to prevent clotting. Which of the following requires strict skin antisepsis before collection? A. Glucose test. B. Blood culture. C. Electrolyte panel. D. Hemoglobin test. Answer. B. Blood cultures require strict skin antisepsis to prevent contamination by skin flora. Which finger should generally be avoided during capillary puncture? A. Ring finger. B. Middle finger. C. Index finger. D. Little finger. Answer. C. The index finger should be avoided due to its sensitivity and higher density of nerve endings. A collapsed vein during venipuncture is often caused by A. Pulling back the plunger too quickly B. Using a large bore needle C. Allowing the patient to clench their fist D. Not applying the tourniquet tightly enough Answer, A. Pulling back the syringe plunger too quickly can cause a vein to collapse from the sudden pressure change. Which type of sample requires chilling? A. Bilirubin. B. Potassium. C. Lactic acid. D. Thyroid hormone. Answer. C. Lactic acid samples must be chilled immediately to prevent falsely elevated levels.
When performing a heel stick on an infant, the puncture should be made. A. In the center of the heel. B. On the lateral or medial plantar surface. C. On the arch of the foot. D. On the toes. Answer. B. The puncture should be made on the lateral or medial plantar surface to avoid bone damage and ensure safety. What is the maximum recommended time a tourniquet should remain applied during venipuncture? A. 1 minute. B. 2 minutes. C. 3 minutes. D. 5 minutes. Answer. B. A tourniquet should not remain on for more than 1 to 2 minutes to avoid hemoconcentration, which can alter test results by increasing concentrations of analytes like potassium and proteins. Which of the following is the best practice for labeling blood specimens? A. Label tubes before collection. B. Label tubes immediately after collection at the patient's side. C. Label tubes at the nurse's station. D. Label tubes after leaving the patient's room. Answer. B. Labeling specimens immediately after collection at the patient's side ensures correct specimen identification and prevents errors associated with unlabeled or mislabeled tubes. What is the primary function of heparin as an additive in blood collection tubes? A. Prevent platelet aggregation. B. Act as an anticoagulant by activating antithrombin 3. C. Preserve red blood cell morphology. D. Promote clotting. Answer, B. Heparin prevents clot formation by activating antithrombin-3, which inhibits thrombin and other clotting factors, making it suitable for tests requiring plasma. Which of the following is a sign of syncope during blood collection? A. Patient complains of dizziness and pallor. B. Patient is alert and calm. C. Patient is laughing. D. Patient has normal vital signs. Answer A. Dizziness, pallor, sweating, and nausea are signs of syncope, fainting, which require immediate intervention such as stopping the procedure and placing the patient in a supine position. What is the purpose of activating safety mechanisms on phlebotomy needles? A. To sterilize the needle. B. To prevent accidental needle stick injuries. C. To increase blood flow. D. To improve patient comfort. Answer. B. Safety mechanisms shield the needle after use to protect healthcare workers from accidental needle stick injuries and reduce risk of bloodborne pathogen transmission. In which situation is capillary blood collection preferred over venipuncture? A. When large volume of blood is needed. B. For patients with fragile veins or difficult venous access. C. For coagulation studies. D. For blood cultures. Answer. B. Capillary collection is preferred for infants, elderly, or patients with fragile or difficult veins where venipuncture is challenging or contraindicated. Which of the following is a key component of infection control and phlebotomy? A. Using sterile gloves for every draw. B. Proper hand hygiene before and after patient contact. C. Reusing needles after sterilization. D. Avoiding use of PPE. Answer. B. Hand hygiene is the cornerstone of infection control, preventing transmission of pathogens between patients and healthcare workers. Needles are single-use and PP is used as appropriate. What is the appropriate action if a patient refuses to have blood drawn? A. Force the procedure to ensure testing. B. Document the refusal and notify the nurse or physician. C. Ignore and proceed anyway. D. Ask another patient for consent. Answer, B. Patient autonomy must be respected. Refusals should be documented and communicated to the healthcare team to ensure proper follow-up and legal compliance. What is the best vein to use for venipuncture in the antecubital fossa? A. Basilic vein. B. Median cubital vein. C. 
cephalic vein. D. Radial vein. Answer, B. The median cubital vein is preferred because it is large, easy to access, and has fewer surrounding nerves and arteries. Hemolysis of a blood sample can be caused by A. Using a small gauge needle B. Drawing blood too slowly C. Allowing alcohol to dry completely D. Inverting tubes gently Answer, A. Using a needle that is too small can cause blood cells to rupture, leading to hemolysis. Which condition would require the use of a dermal puncture instead of venipuncture? A. Patient with dehydration. B. Patient needing multiple blood cultures. C. Severely burned arms. D. Patient with high blood pressure. Answer, C. Patients with severe burns on their arms require dermal puncture because venous access is compromised. Which tube is used for a blood culture collection? A. Yellow top tube. B. Red top tube. C. Light blue top tube. D. Lavender top tube. Answer, A. Yellow top tubes containing SPS, sodium polyenthal sulfonate, are used for blood cultures to detect infections. Which complication can occur if a phlebotomist punctures an artery instead of a vein? A. Hematoma. B. Hemoconcentration. C. Petechiae. D. Lipemia. Answer, A. Accidental arterial puncture can cause a large hematoma due to high arterial pressure. How should a specimen for an ammonia test be handled? A. Keep at room temperature. B. Protect from light. C. Place on ice immediately. D. Heat the sample. Answer. C. Ammonia levels must be placed on ice immediately after collection to prevent falsely elevated results. What angle should a needle be inserted for a routine venipuncture? A. 5 to 10 degrees. B. 15 to 30 degrees. C. 35 to 45 degrees. D. 45 to 60 degrees. Answer. B. A 15 to 30 degree angle is recommended to properly access the vein without causing tissue damage. What is the term for the breakdown of red blood cells in a blood sample? A. Coagulation. B. Hemoconcentration. C. Hemolysis. D. Petechiae. Answer. C. Hemolysis refers to the rupture of red blood cells, which can interfere with many laboratory tests. Which specimen must be protected from light? A. Blood culture. B. Ammonia. C. Bilirubin. D. Glucose. Answer. C. Bilirubin specimens must be shielded from light to prevent degradation of the analyte. What is the main reason for using a butterfly needle? A. To draw larger volumes of blood. B. To reduce clotting in samples. C. To access small or fragile veins. D. To increase speed of collection. Answer. C. Butterfly needles are used for patients with small, fragile, or difficult veins to ensure successful collection. Which action increases the risk of hemoconcentration during a blood draw? A. Using the wrong size tube. B. Leaving the tourniquet on too long. C. Drawing blood quickly. D. Using a larger needle. Answer, B. Prolonged tourniquet application traps blood in the veins, leading to hemoconcentration. What test requires fasting before collection? A. CBC. B. Point slash INR. C. Glucose tolerance test. D. ESR. Answer. C. Fasting is required before a glucose tolerance test to obtain accurate baseline glucose levels. 
If a patient has an four-line in the right arm, where should blood be drawn? A. Below the four. B. Above the four. C. Left arm. D. Right arm, near the wrist. Answer. C. Blood should be drawn from the opposite arm to avoid contamination from four fluids.